Hey guys, welcome to another episode of NetSec Now. Uh, in the last video we showed you how to install and configure OpenVos and do some scanning and stuff like that, but uh, when you reboot your machine, you're not going to be able to restart it um, for the web interface quickly without going through the terminal and doing a bunch of commands and then going in and updating it through the web UI, which can take a while. So I went ahead and created a script, as I mentioned uh, in the description of the last video, uh, to actually do all these tasks for you. And all you have to do is enter one command, run the script, and it'll all do it for you. Um, so today I'm going to show you quickly uh, how to get this going. So open up your favorite browser when you're inside uh, your box and let's go to uh, our website here learnnetsec.blogspot.com go, go under the downloads tab here at the top and you can see right here OpenVos, uh, OpenVos 6 Kali Linux Auto Update and Startup Script just click on the download link it's going to bring you over to our SourceForge page um, and then you're going to want to go ahead and click on OpenVos uh, Quick Start dot tar file or tgz because it's a uh, gzip compressed and it's gonna open up here a download link for you now you could save this wherever you want I'm just gonna save it to the desktop here uh, as root um, just for easy purposes you could also use wget2 if you're a command line junkie like me but since this video is geared towards beginners I'm just gonna use the easiest possible stuff that we can okay so you can see it downloaded we can close this out we can close this out minimize the uh, browser um, now you can right click on it here and open uh, or you can use the command line and extract it which is what I'm going to go ahead and do so uh, we can just CD to desktop because when we open up a uh, terminal we're in our home directory here so CD to desktop issue the LS command just to see that you have it uh, issue the tar command, which is tar dash uh, xvf for extract verbose file, and then type in openvos, and you can use autocomplete for that. And it's just going to unzip it and uncompress it right to your desktop directory. And then you can see we have that folder now created on the desktop here. Um, you know, again, I'm a command line junkie guy, so you know you can just double click and open it here and open the file and do it. Um, I'm going to use a command line because I like to kind of see what's going on so I'm just going to close that out. Uh, so now if we issue the ls command again we see the folder openvos startup like we did on the regular desktop GUI so we're just going to change directories cd into that. Now you can delete the uh, tar file after you know you've extracted it. Uh, if you ls in here there's going to be a readme.txt file um, you can also always cat, oh, sorry, cat the readme.txt file, and it kind of shows you its usages. I mean, um, you don't you don't really have to read this because I'm going to show you how to do it anyway. But just in case you forget, uh, you can always view this video again. Of course, we recommend you like the videos, subscribe to them, and add them to your favorites list. Anyway, moving forward, I'm just going to clear the screen out here. Um, so again, the OpenVos startup uh, script is a shell script. It's it's written in Bash. Uh, I wrote it myself. If you want to see the contents of the file to make sure it's not going to do anything crazy and evil to your system, you can always cat the file itself and go through it and it'll show you what it's going to do. So just to walk you through the script quickly, I don't want to make this video extraordinarily long. It's Friday. I've got things to do. It's late uh, and I want to go out and join my weekend. So anyway, you can see here just tells you uh, script by Afterburner and that's now and then it's going to set up the NVT sync. Now this is part of the update functions that you would do in the web UI of OpenVos 6. Um, it'll tell you what it's doing syncing database and then it's going to run the command OpenVos NVT sync then it's going to update the SCAP data feed same thing run that command it's going to open up the CR, uh, CERT or the CERT feed same thing here. Now it's going to start the necessary services for the actual web UI and uh, it starts the Greenbone Security Assistant uh, it starts the OpenVos scanner, scanner, scanner. Um, starts OpenVos administrator and starts OpenVos manager. Now it tells you that services have been started. 
Um, you know, guys, when you run this script, it's going to take a while, depending on how many updates it needs to update. Um, taking, uh, it's going to take a little while to start the services and stuff like that. So keep that in mind. Um, it may take a minute or less, maybe two minutes tops, uh, depending on how fast your system is, of course, and how fast your internet connection is to download the new signature files or the update files. Um, now, here's the beautiful thing about this script, and, and I wanted to make it as easy as possible for you guys, right? So it's automatically going to launch either IceWeasel or whatever your default browser is at the time, and it's going to navigate to the script and the port. So uh, I'm sorry, to the address and the port. So to log in, so you don't have to worry about remembering, you know, typing in HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash localhost or 127.0.0.1 colon 93.92. You don't have to worry about that because it's automatically going to do it for you. Okay. Um, if you're having issues, of, again, of course, you can go to our SourceForge page and send me an email there, or you can send an email to learnnetsec at gmail.com. Anyway, let's get started with starting the script. Um, you want to look at the permissions on the script. By default, as you can see here on the script, right, the first set of three uh, settings here, um, well, I should say this. Just we'll get into a file permissions tutorial in later dates, but this would dictate if it's a directory or not. The first line here, the next set of three characters, read, write, execute, uh, is for the owner of the file or the user, and then you have the next three here is for the group, which is a group here, and then the next three here is for everybody else. Well, we don't want everybody and anybody being able to read our file, write to our file, or execute our file, right? So we need to change some permissions. So what you can do is, uh, not channel, that's change owner. Um, uh, what is, oh geez, now I forgot the command here. Oh my goodness, it's been a rough week. Um, so, it's not, it's not chown. Um Oh, for God's sake, I did this before. Let me just arrow up. I can't believe I forgot. Oh, it's change mod, change mode. Sorry about that, guys. It's a rough week. It's Friday. I'm itching to get out of here. So, uh, change mod, and then you want to do um, others, and then you want a negative sign or just a dash. Read, write, execute. Then you want to do it on the file. Open Voss. Help if I could spell. Okay, so now that's going to take away the read, write, execute permissions from all others. So if you do an LSL again, it should have worked. Yes. So now you can see it's read, write, execute for the owner root, read, write, execute for anybody that's in the group root, which root should only be in the group root. Okay, so to fire the script, uh, let's say you just logged into your system, you want to fire up OpenVos and run some scans. Here's the situation. You just navigate into this directory on your desktop or wherever you put it, wherever you extracted it to. Just type in period forward slash open VOS and you can use autocomplete with the tab key if you wanted to and just hit enter. Now you can see it's going through. It's updating the NVT database. It's going to open uh, the SCAP feed. It's going to update that. Um, you know, it's going to go through a bunch of things to update, like as we looked in in the script. Obviously, as you could see, it does nothing evil to your system. I'm not the kind of guy that wants to break your system. I'm the kind of guy that wants to teach you how to use your system, right? So, just a word to the wise, anytime you download a script from anywhere, especially a bash script, and you're going to be running it as a root, be aware to always check the contents of the script. There are a lot of evil people out there that wish to do harm to your system always checked the content of it by catting it. If you're not familiar with bash scripting, do a little research on it. Make sure it's a trusted source. Um, you know, I don't usually recommend downloading regular scripts from the internet created by other users. However, obviously I made this. You don't know who I am, so I wouldn't trust me either, but as I showed you, there's nothing evil going on in the script. I tried to make it as simple as possible and easy to understand. So anyway, you can see here it's starting the OpenVos services, starting Green Your Own Security Assistant, and once the service actually starts, it'll append what it started at the end of it. So you can see the started GSAD. 
So now it's going to start the OpenBot scanner. And like I said, it could take a, 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 you know, a minute or maybe two, uh, maybe less. It depends really, again, on your hardware speed uh, as well as you know, your internet speed once you downloaded it. Uh, and then you know, to download the updates for the databases uh, for the vulnerabilities. So let's just give it a minute or two here um, just to talk about the blog. Uh, I've been really happy. Our YouTube channel is getting a lot more subscribers. Our Facebook page has got a couple more likes. Our blog is getting more hits. That's really awesome, guys. Keep up the good work. Spread the word. I love that. Um, check the uh, blog regularly for uh, new security vulnerabilities on the feeds that we have there on the right-hand side. Of course, if you feel the need to make a donation because the things I teach you or scripts I write for you are helping you out, by all means, make a PayPal donation. You can use a credit card, prepaid, debit card, whatever you got. Uh, I'd appreciate that because I run on coffee. I usually do this stuff pretty late at night, so I don't have any interruptions. Um, so I need coffee to keep me going. Anyway, uh, moving forward, it's starting the OpenVos Manager. And you can see now it's going to launch Ice Weasel with the web UI. And in just a moment here, once the script finishes executing, you'll be dropped back into a terminal. Uh, and then it's going to open up the browser automatically. And you can see it's going to ask us for a login. And then, of course, in the last video in, in uh, setting up and installing OpenVos 6, we created a username, or the username is default admin, and the password you created, uh, you should enter that in here. So. probably gonna fail I think I got the wrong password okay my apologies <laughs> okay I have so many different passwords guys it's it's unbelievable so I'm having an error here starting it up so let's see if that error goes away there we go okay so if you log in with the wrong password guys um, it might error out so at that point, you know, just go into the URL and delete the OWP or OMP thing and just go back to, uh, you know, the address and the port. And then you can log in successfully again. If for whatever reason you're still having an issue and it's not starting, you may have underlying issues. Best bet, reboot the system and try running the startup script again. Or you can just try running the startup script again without rebooting the system. All it's going to do is maybe error and say the service is already running or whatever. Um, but you could try to do that. And then, of course, you know, once you do that, you should be able to log in. Um, but like I said, the reason why I had an issue is because I have so many different crazy complex passwords I forget what I use for half of my stuff so <laughs> my own fault and I refuse to write them down I don't recommend you ever write down your passwords on any kind of piece of paper or a digital document because if you do get compromised you are finished all of your passwords are gone anyway um, and I don't recommend using the same password across everything because that's just silliness and very easily to compromise. Anyway, so now you're in here. Shows you how the script worked. Hopefully this video is not going to turn out to be too long. It is Friday. Like I said, I am out of here. Enjoy your weekend, guys. I will see you on Monday. Uh, and on Monday, I'm going to try to make another video um, based on using Metasploit and Armitage as your free front end. Now, uh, as you can see, I kind of have it fired up here. Uh, and I've been doing some scans on some stuff. Uh, for somebody but um, yeah we're gonna get into that next video hopefully Monday by maybe Monday night I should have it produced if not Tuesday I should have it produced so again guys I appreciate if you like the YouTube channel like the videos and subscribe uh, like the Facebook page and of course always check out our blog for daily news and updates alright guys enjoy your weekend I'll see you next week